Oh, my God, Whitney. <laughs> Isn't she? Oh, oh that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's oh really my good God. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> we'll kill a little time. You can do the entire theme song if you like. Keep on dancing. How long is that? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I have to get a picture of that, Doug. Don't go away yet. There you go. Wait, 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 wait. I need a picture wait, too. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my God. That was so cute. You want to put your hands up and do the boogie again? Just there we go. Thank you. That's <laughs> okay, phenomenal. You Where'd you get that mask? Is it a mask and a hat, both? I made it. You made it? Wow. <laughs> that's, I made it. that's dedication. I made it out of cardboard. I made it out of cardboard in a file. <laughs> that's crazy. That's good. Now, now we know why you're an award-winning incentive and, travel. And we even, did a, we even did lapelettes on the shoulders. I see that. I see that. I'm Captain Stubing. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. Liz, Liz brought out this one. This was a <laughs> didn't quite go with the theme though, but, <laughs> but I could put it on. <laughs> I, I could be one of the I could be one of the attendees. <laughs> oh my god. You guys are cracking me up. Josh, I think Liz is done it. Karen, we do this. We do this every every week or so. Well, at least uh, Carol and uh, Whitney do. We just uh, going on one year, baby. We're gonna have ourselves a little birthday party in a couple weeks. So, oh yeah! Woo. Wow. Yeah. That's right. Fifty. Hey, Scott. We've got fifty-two weeks. We're uh, this is our fiftieth. Wow. Um, and so on December on April fourteenth, we're gonna have a birthday party for ourselves because that's quite a feat. We haven't missed, we've only missed two weeks. Uh, that was for Christmas and New Year's. So yay us. Awesome. <laughs> it's come that's close incredible. a few times. <laughs> that's for sure. Who else wants to say hi? Who's gonna say hi today? I wanna hear some myths and legends. Oh, myths and legends. Um, well, hmm. <laughs> Well, one you time, time we had, go check it. You, you have time to Google that, Josh. <laughs> go for it. So, you know, one time we were on a, we were doing one of these back to back six cruises and we got to be fr pretty good friends with all the staff. So we used to go down to the staff bar uh, back in the old days. And um, so we, we had a really annoying meeting planner. I can't remember, but we did. Um, so we short sheeted their bed. What we did was in between the sheets, we put all of that Norwegian mayonnaise that um, that you <laughs> long tubes. You remember that stuff, Karen? Um, that they loved. So, <laughs> oh my God! So when the planner got in, this was back when I was working for Ian McDonald Carlson. They slid into their bed and right into mayonnaise. So that was that was kind of fun. It was nice, sweet, sweet revenge. They never did figure it out, do it, but they were, they weren't as annoying anymore. Was the back in the right. days when you could get away with that fun stuff. Oh yeah. That's pretty great. <laughs> kind of mischief doesn't go on anymore, does it, Karen? Ooh, no. Anybody seen Below Deck? I want to watch that. That is actually on my watch list, Below Deck. <laughs> it is so what, good. What's Do you, the premise? Like it? Yeah. I'm very it's, a, it's, it's yacht charters that and it follows the captain and the crew of these yacht charters with their Hoity toity guests that come on board and, and you oh, know some cool. of it, it it's just it's like a soap opera at sea. It's pretty funny. It's great. Actually, there's an Irish girl that's on right now and she went to the same college as I did. Oh and funny. Yeah, so she's she's hotel trained. Interesting. And that's that's like below that's deck med. Crazy. That's that's below deck med. Yeah, they're in Croatia. Yes. They're in Croatia uh, now. Not that I've watched every season, every episode or anything. Oh yeah, not, like not, not me, not me either. <laughs> well, I even watch, I even after watch the after watch what happens to see the the follow up of where they are now. Watching oh. Fleabag, that's pretty good. 
<laughs> I had oh my a friend. God, Josh, I can't, I can't even, I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend who was working as crew on Fancy Yacht in the Bahamas <laughs> one Thanksgiving and uh, it was, you know, yacht, I think they had three or four couples. The yacht was, the yacht charterer was William F. Buckley and his family. Oh. And mm -hmm. when they pulled into the small marina, they ran into one of the Kennedy kids, a younger Kennedy generation, one of the Kennedys that was in politics. And they hung out the entire afternoon. She just served them drinks in the salon and, you know, all this interesting different of a difference of opinions, but everybody got along in those days and it was just a very happy afternoon. So that was kind of a fun story. I like your sunset. I like it too. I thought that was one of the prettiest pictures that we found. <laughs> I don't know what ship that is. Do you recognize it? Move your head to the one side for one second. Nope. I've got all these pop-ups in the way. Like uh, you probably can't see it because I have my screen there. I'll give you an opportunity though. Hold on. Let me move that. You can always tell about the smoke stack. There you go. Now, this is a test. Who's, whose ship is that? It my, looks like my, a Norwegian ship, but I don't know. I didn't tell you. I don't think I told you this story, Carol, but the last, um, the last charter I did on Paul Gauguin, this is a couple of years ago, um, we had this woman that was just partying like crazy with her husband. And um, finally they had to put, they had, they had to sedate her to a point where. Oh dear. I, oh yeah. She, I went in, I mean, it was, we sat in there. We finally had to medevac her from Bora Bora uh, sedated. This is great. And um, I kept her from going to jail because I found, I opened up the, the drawer and I found a whole plate full of cocaine on, on the plate. Oh no. And the nurse so had we have to multitask in this job, do we? So the nurse hadn't been the nurse had been sitting watch, um, and she was Russian, so was the uh, so was the uh, the doctor, and she had been watching. And so I had to pick this plate up and like kind of carry it into the bathroom and then dump everything into the into the toilet to keep her from going to to you know Bora Bora jail in yeah. Polynesia. So this is the best part. So we finally we get her off the ship. We have to spend twenty thousand dollars to medevac her all the way back to Papiete to to put her into the hospital, and mm. <laughs> and then being being the uh, entrepreneur that she was, she talked her way out of the hospital a day later and ended up at the pool bar. <laughs> when my client VIP was extending <laughs> back on Morea. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he 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 couldn't get we couldn't get rid of her. <laughs> but, but that was uh, that was a hell of a story and it, and um, uh, and I, I, I we kept we kept everybody out of the headlines which was good so well that was good. that's the yeah. important part yeah yeah <laughs> I have a million you. questions about how you came up with twenty thousand dollars to pay for medevac but I guess I'll have to wait well you know um, but the ship billed me later and and I put and you know we put it on the credit card and yeah and later so this is a this is the sort of thing that I used to dread. We we did quite a few uh, cruises back in my day too. And, you know, the unlimited liquor or the cheap liquor was just trouble. And we had to lock a few people in their cabins over time. Just to oh, yeah. their own way. <laughs> hey, Scott is, it, is back. Hey, Scott, what's going on? Hey, 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 how you doing? Good, I'll, good, good. What's going on with you? I'm uh, just really glad that our industry appears to be coming back. And uh, so nice to see Karen. Uh, Karen's company helped us uh, charter two ships out of, uh, it was kind of a cool, it was a tandem cruise that left Venice and left Athens and came together oh. Oh. Uh, at different islands and uh, then we ended up in, in Istanbul and we actually took over the, the market there which was oh. bizarre, which is really cool for the final That's awesome. Was that That's this a, year or when? When was that? What a great party. It yeah. was a 20... 13, 14, 15, somewhere around there? Somewhere around there. Yeah, which, which, I kind of lose track, but it, it's been a few years ago, but Karen's company did a, a kick butt job. And Thank you. Uh, I think it's, it's cyclical and we need to do that again. Yeah, I mean, you know, chartering two ships and having them come together is, is a big deal. Complicated, yeah, honestly. it's complicated. Um, which so cruise you're, line you're, did you use? Which which ships did you use rather? We, we used the, uh, uh, the Navigator. The navigator Regions. and yep. the uh, yep. wow. What, what, what's the other the the bigger ship? Mariner, uh, I think it was. Mariner, yeah, the Mariner, the Mariner. 
So Regent, Regent we used uh, to answer your question. Yeah. They did a great job. The logistics must have just been so interesting though, because all these little, yeah. if you're trying to bring the population of two vessels together for a party in these small islands, that yeah. would feed in itself. Somebody has a big- It's funny big... because these tandem charters of ships, like we're doing them like river ships now, ocean ships. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how much easier that's gotten. I mean, it's still not easy. It's complicated moving vessels around like that, right? But it's cool. It's a cool thing when you can pull it off. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, and it addresses this whole issue of, you know, trying to bring everybody together in settings that aren't on a cruise ship, right? Where you can, you know, have the atmosphere and the space and all that kind of stuff to really entertain a large crowd, so. Yep, and, and then you might have... be talking about that today. I hope you are, I hope you are. <laughs> give us some, give, give us some of these inspired ideas. Yes, Love it. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, thanks for chiming that story in. Hey Scott, Scott and Karen, or what, or what was the, the true story? What was the point? Like, what was the uh, what were you trying to achieve in particular by doing like this the tandem cruise and, and getting people out of two ports? Well, there was um, the the challenge was there was not a five star vessel that could hold. Big enough. Um, it was I want to say we had twelve hundred couples, so <laughs> you know, twenty four hundred people. So you yeah. just couldn't you couldn't get a five-star vessel that like Regent had and the client loved Regent. And so we, we took two of their ships and we just, I honestly don't remember exactly how we came up with that concept. Um, but it was, That's I think, really cool. as I recall, it was just a space issue. We, we just, yeah, it was, it was definitely a space, a space issue. We, we, yeah, they were too big for one luxury vessel. So we, we did two. So they yeah. all get the same cruise experience and same delivery. That's awesome. And, and the client was enamored with the fact that they basically were chartering two ships because, you know, what's better than chartering one ship, chartering two. <laughs> How did they determine who was going on what ship and did you eventually cover the same itinerary? You just took it from different angles? Yeah, and, and great question. We ended up covering the same itinerary other than one group got to start in Venice and the other group started in Athens. And we came together uh, at a port where Olympia is and we did a, the first night party was at that port and we parked both ships on the pier on either side. And then in between, we had this amazing party where everybody came together because they hadn't seen, you know, the other half, if you will. Right. And to answer your question, they, they came up with a way of uh, geographically, people that would know each other, as I recall, were on the Navigator and the other people were on the, the Voyager. And uh, it, it was neat because there's a lot of stories that that happened you know what happened on this ship what happened on that ship and right um so it, what i love about that is that somebody really thought outside the box when it came to trying to address the problem of this big group that needed you know a, a lot more space than a luxury liner could accommodate and the the thinking around how to solve that problem because i feel like so many times the customer will just turn down the suggestion without thinking through the possibilities Right. And I think I, I would assume I assume you were with USM when that program happened. Yeah, yeah, and that was. team was really good at um, you know just thinking how to solve a problem. That's what that's what you're being paid to do, right? Um, and then persuading the, the the decision maker that's not too risky. And and then the real I mean, you talk about a, an account executive me that was a little scared behind the scenes when you have 2,400 people in the bazaar. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention that. I wanted to ask you about that. During yeah. Ramadan. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. You talk about a target on your head. Yeah. Um, my goodness. So, so we had security, and it, it was a big, 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 big deal. Um, yeah, I was did relieved. Did you have any real incidents that occurred, or did everything just go hunky-dory? The, the only incident was a fun one, and that was one of the gentlemen who, kind of like Josh's group, had too much to drink had taken off his shirt and he had a he had a rather large beer belly and he was doing belly dancing with the real belly dancers oh my God. in the bazaar and it really looked like if it had been you could put it on TV as a reality show like this is really American tourist gone bad kind of thing. <laughs> <sighs> somewhere Tourists I've got a picture of the, the people bizarre the tourists people. in, in bazaars. Wow. Yeah. But the other the other interesting thing is during Ramadan you uh, you're, if you practice the Muslim faith, you're not going to eat anything. And so what we had to do is we had to feed all the store owners right at dusk 
yeah. when the sun went down and then we came in right after because there's no way that, I mean they hadn't eaten all day so they can't sit there and you know so, take care of us for two hours um, yeah I think actually I think that's lovely and that's probably a cultural opportunity to really you know bond with your local host and you know the local population and see how they actually celebrate Ramadan because it's not just about deprivation during the day it's a big party after the sun goes down yeah so we we learned a lot and uh and Karen and 3D really uh really helped us so it was a a joint project and it was a success awesome I know Karen appreciates that endorsement yeah thank well, you Karen deserves it mermaid. <laughs> thank you uh, who else wants to say hello I saw Heather Wren and Heather Allen both y'all want to say hi hey guys <laughs> There she is. Hey, Heather. So I was at a loss with the whole myths and legend thing and just went back to, I mean, my favorite, Indiana Jones. So, you know, we got the, the temple. There you go. There go. This <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. What do you like best about the Indiana Jones legend besides Harrison Ford? I was going to say Harrison Ford. Uh -huh. And I mean, they're just fun stories. And actually, uh -huh. during COVID, I was able with my kids, I got to expose them to all of Indiana Jones because it was a repeat on TNT for like 48 hours so that yeah. was fun. <laughs> did, I, did you get did you hook a couple of your young people in your family? Yes my 10 year old now is obsessed and trying to plan trips to Costa Rica so. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's not a bad outcome for sure. No no I'm, I'm good with it. <laughs> Um, I don't see the Meachams on this call and they usually are good for a tale or two that's surprising. Who else wants to say hello? I wanted to tell you, I've got a bit of good news in that, um, well, I'm fully vaxxed, which a lot of you are, but um, going to do a site inspection for two groups um, for 450 people down to Cancun on the 12th. So um, we're going awesome. down, to book some rooms and get back to business. Woohoo! I think a lot That's of people fantastic are, news. A yeah. lot of people are in that we boat, boy. Like RFP yeah. flying around this week, which is really good news. Yeah, so uh, I guess the biggest thing was I had to make sure that we got to go. They're only coming in for 24 hours, the clients. So we have to go straight to Moon and get the vac, and get the test, and then we can do our site so that they can have the result before they leave on the plane the next morning because they're only on the ground. Okay, they, they have such a short wow. turnaround. Wow. Yeah, they said they can turn the test around in 45 minutes. So really, yeah, according to them, uh, and apparently it's the test that our will accept on the way back right but you know we're all bring, we're, 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 we will have all been vaccinated so we're bringing all i mean you can still pass on covid and you can still test positive but we're bringing all that documentation with us just in case you know i'm probably one of the only people on the planet that has never had a test i've never had a covid test wow never oh, i don't want that thing up my nose no go away with that I guess I'll do they it. Don't, they don't do that the same way anymore, though. Now it's like the last couple I've had of just a Q-tip inside the nostril. It's not right. into your brain cavity yeah. anymore. I heard that phrase scratching my brain a few too many times and just thought, I'm just staying home until the post is clear. I'm, they I'm, still I'm, have I'm to bend over. Right hey, hey, hey. I did not like the idea of that. No. Um, I wanted to say hi to, let's see, Melissa. Melissa, are you on? You don't have to turn your camera on. Just say, hey. Hey, yes, I'm here, Carol. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm in the same boat, as it were, with you of not ever having a COVID test either. We should, we but, should form a club. Have you had We should, yeah. the stay home club. <laughs> I'll stay at home before I'll have them swab my nose. Have you, had, have you had your shots yet? I got my first one last week. Great, that's great. Good, brave girl. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone in the pharmaceutical business that wouldn't get a shot, right? Yes. That would not be really wise. And I think we have Lenoir on the line. And I don't know that I know you. Lenoir, can you say hi? Hello. Hello. How are you? Look at that pretty background. Hawaii. Hawaii. Well, who doesn't love Hawaii? That's beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. What's going on? Just trying to get some new information hoping to get people interested in traveling. Well, I think the world is turning in that direction and Karen's got some really good things to share. So stay tuned. She's gonna, we're gonna introduce her in two seconds, I believe. And Greg Traska, Greg, are you still with us? 
you're not somebody that comes every week. Can you say hi? Did you go away? I think he jumped off. I yeah, think I lost jumped. him. Oh, yeah, you lost him. All right. Wait, there's a Benjamin Woody. Yeah, well, that's that's our sweet Ben. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. We already saw him. He... <laughs> Thank you for thanks for monitoring, Josh. I was coming right. back inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we are, it's time to get started. So Whitney, do you want to go ahead and set the tone? Have you taken your G spot off? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> well, well, no, I haven't taken it off, but um, uh, I'm Whitney and I think I know everyone on the call. Uh, we want to thank, thank you all for being here. Um, today's a, a little bit different in that we're covering an industry, which is exciting. And as you know, there's a lot going on in the cruise industry. So Karen is the expert in that. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat box. We're going to record today. So, um, and everyone just keep yourselves muted so that we have a nice clean recording. Uh, I'll be moderating your questions and things at the end. And we'll go ahead and uh, announce the first five winners. If Carol, you want to handle that? Well, if Greg and Heather both uh, fell off, you're going to need to send me the, the fifth. Um, so most of you who've been with us know that we uh, do a little gift every week for the first five people to log on after 3.55. And um, I have that list for you now. This week, we're going to let Whitney create some boat drinks. So Whitney's got her cocktail recipe book out and is going to send a little boat drink kit to the first five people with love from us. And those people are Heather Wren, little Indiana Jones girl, Josh Brown, of course, how could we not give him a boat drink or two? <laughs> Melissa Barney Schaffler, um, Lenoir, you got one too, and Heather Allen. Uh, Heather Allen uh, is dropped off, and Greg Trasca has dropped off. Whitney, pick somebody else. Yeah, uh, the next- She has question. a little time clock that she has to come uh, Yeah, with. it was uh, Scott Seward. <laughs> Scott, boat drink, Scott, and no, no refusing either. Scott usually turns down everything that we try to give him. <laughs> yeah, but Lisa will be very happy to see this one. Yeah. yeah. Scott's always been a huge drinker. It's just, it's a shot or two. All That's right, true, so, Kelly. Thank uh, you, Kelly. You're, you're welcome. We just want people to know how generous and kind you are and how good you are to us. Oh, well, I hate to take, I mean, the two people, maybe if they come back on, Whitney, if give they it come the, back, we'll share the extra booze, yeah, but otherwise just, you're getting the shot. It's not yeah. that exciting. I, I was kind of the default there. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did, we, uh, you know, we're clever, but uh, let's just say it won't hurt us to do more than four. Um, all right. Karen Devine is someone I have known for many years. Uh, we really appreciate the testimony that you all gave for the uh, fact that she is one of the, the country's leading experts actually on cruising. She has been on both sides of the business. She's been on the incentive side, but she's worked for several different cruise lines in her career and now has set up her company to assist all of us in keeping up with the cruise industry, which is I find as an industry a little difficult to navigate sometimes. Um, so Karen is your solution. If you're wondering uh, how cruises operate, how charters operate, what ships, what cruise lines are expanding their fleet, who's going where, what's new in the industry in general, then Karen's your girl. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce all of you to Karen Devine. Karen, take it away. Hey guys, can everybody see the screen? Yep. Awesome. So thank you for that, Carol. I'm thrilled to talk to you guys. It's uh, an interesting time, as you can imagine, in the cruise industry. Um, and what I want to do today is take you kind of through a timeline of uh, where we were, uh, where we are, and more importantly, where we're going. So um, with that, I mean, I just tried really hard to come up with a little mythical background here, but clearly you people are experts at this and I'm not. So I'm just going to move on ahead here. Did that? Oops, sorry. There we go. So I just mentioned this. So what I want to spend a minute on is the cruise industry obviously has gone through a lot um, in the media um, and in general, of course, throughout COVID. And I know we're all just so excited to continue to talk about COVID, not so much. 
Um, but as our industry returns, it's really important that you all know some of the facts. Um, and I love the title of what we're doing and debunking some of the myths because there was a lot reported last year in the cruise industry or regarding the cruise industry that wasn't exact, exactly uh, in context. And that's what I wanna spend a few minutes talking about today. Um, and what we started last year was a series called uh, reality versus perception, because I was screaming from the rooftops about what was being reported because it was so out of context with what was actually going on. And I'm going to give you some examples of that um, as I start through this. So where were we when COVID began? In 2019, the cruise industry had record numbers, record year, record ships coming out, nothing but growth, very exciting stuff everywhere with all kinds of new product. And then obviously we all know what happened. Um, and what I wanted to just talk about here for a moment, just to establish, I keep saying the word context because it's so very important that you know that. Um, and we all saw a particular cruise ship last January in Asia. And the facts surrounding that were um, not reported to the extent that I wish they had been. Because if you think about what was going on last January, February, March, Nobody knew exactly what the heck we were dealing with. That ship in Asia was the first time COVID really became um, a media sensation, if you will. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that wasn't very serious because of course it was. But what I want you to be aware of is that third bullet that I have there, um, there's a reason why only 700 out of the over 6,200 on board became infected. A lot of you know cruise, but the reality of this was cruise ships know how to mitigate virus. Back at that time, they were under Asian jurisdiction. They had no idea what they were dealing with other than they had a virus on board. They were not allowed because of the jurisdiction they were in to disembark these guests. They had to keep them on board. So they did what they know how to do. They shut it down, they quarantined. That's exactly why the only 700 happened. What's really interesting to me is the way this was reported was just so abysmal because the fact was, and that's kind of the, the top bullet there, and I'm jumping a bit all over the place, but I just, again, trying to establish some context about what happened. The actual stat was 0. 0.0006 of the total global impact. And that was last March, right? So then the, the cruise industry voluntarily shut down. So those numbers stayed. But the bottom line was this came onto that ship in Asia, just like it left Asia and went to other parts of the world. It traveled. So the ships shut it down, the cruise lines continued to sail for a little while, and then in March they voluntarily shut it all down. So what I want you to be aware of is there was a lot of factual information that people just weren't aware of at the time. And that also included all the media showing ships stuck at sea, passengers unable to disembark, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The net net of all of that is that stat on number of cases on cruise ships worldwide, considering 340 ships and over 550,000 people sailing was next to nothing, but it got so much attention in the media um, and so much negative aspect to that, which is why we sit here today with a major perception issue, which I'll talk about also in a second. Um, and then there was what I also wanted to explain to you was the everything we saw in the media about the ships not coming in wasn't that the ships were ill. There were so few people with cases on those ships. That's a fact. What happened was the ports of call wouldn't let the ships in. It was in the middle of that whole nightmare. And if you think about it, at that time, there was no social distancing. There was no masking anywhere. Nobody really knew what they were dealing with. So the ships did the best that they could. But because and that's the last bullet there that's really important, the cruise industry is literally the only aspect of the hospitality industry that reports to the CDC. Nobody else does. So these numbers that were being reported were because the numbers reported to CDC are required by cruise lines. Think about it when there's a norovirus um, issue on a ship. There's no stomach flu or norovirus ever reported that comes off of an airline or a hotel or whatever. It's always just ships. Why? Because ships are required to report. So I just wanted to establish that, and I'm sorry to spend a minute on that, but it's really important that you know a little bit more surrounding the news. So cruise industry voluntarily shut down globally. Then what? Um, over the course of last year, they started working with the CDC in developing a return to service protocol. And many of you probably know that ships have always been an incredibly safe and healthy way to travel. Why? 
because of the stringent protocols they have to go through in order to be allowed to sail, not just in the United States, but everywhere. So, you know, I kind of laugh sometimes and say the whole washy-washy thing on some of the ships, the uh, sanitizing stations and hand-washing stations and health screening and all the stuff that has always been done on ships to the point where the health and safety company that was brought on by Four Seasons, Fairmont, JW, and a few other brands literally said, this is a published article last year, they were looking to what the cruise industry used to do, much less what they're going to do going forward, what they used to do in order to figure out what to do going forward, because the ships have already had these protocols in place, hotels and so forth had not. So that was really interesting to me that they were going to look to what was happening before. So with that, um, the CDC actually had a no sale order in place, and that was lifted on October 31st of 2020, replaced by what was called a conditional sale order. What that meant was there were 75 steps of things that had to, that was in the original conditional sale order that the ships had to do in order to return to service. I'll talk about that more later. But some of that included um, a very detailed plan to allow guests and crew to safely cruise. What happened with that was two major cruise lines came together as an example of what was taking place to address the no sale of the conditional sale order. Norwegian Cruise Line and Royal Caribbean brands came together and formed the Healthy Sail Panel. I won't go into all the experts here, but you get, you get the idea. It's medical, it's science, it's government coming together to try to figure out what's the best way forward? What do we need to do? Um, and how do we get there that the CDC will clear the ships and allow them to sail? What that included was a multi-step approach from testing and screening, sanitation, improved ventilation, um, the response system, which is what I talked about with the ports of call, which meant that the ports of call have to approve the ships to come in, which they're now doing, by the way, um, destination and, and excursions operating in a bubble. All of this stuff was put together, by the way, before vaccine came out. This was to address how can we return to cruises safely? The other cool thing, and this is just a win-win all the way around, was coming up with technology or enhancing the technology that was already in place. One of the things that Royal Caribbean came up with, which we all love because those of you have been on a ship and had to do a muster drill, oh my gosh, those days are, are gonna be over. Now it's gonna be e-mustering. That's amazing because it's also touchless, it's technology, nobody has to go stand in a crowd with anybody. So that was a really cool thing. And then they also came up with a tracelet, which is a contact trace device. This is currently operating on Royal Caribbean ship, the one that's operating in Asia. The CDC has actually asked for more technology information for this and, at least from what I understand, this and the Muster 2.0 as an idea to perhaps implement throughout the cruise industry. Because it, this is what the whole point of this is. It's not an it's not an if, it's when somebody, you know, tests positive for COVID wherever going forward. If it happens on a ship, the last thing in the world we want is for the whole ship to have to turn around because one person tested positive or a family or whatever it may be. Tracelet allows the contact tracing to step in where if I if I test positive, I'm going to be quarantined and everybody I've been in touch with will be tested to ensure we shut that down on the ship. And then the rest of the crews can go on as planned. Those guests, there's a plan in place already approved. Ports of call, part of the return to service is the ports of call have to approve the ship coming in with that contingency plan. Those guests are disembarked and quarantined the ship moves on with what it was going to do. So again, there won't be any, any issue in the future uh, of ships stuck at sea, which really wasn't quite true because it was the ports of call, as I mentioned. So that's alleviated now going forward. Also the HEPA filters and, and filtered air. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of these ships, they don't share air. The cabin filtration system has always been individual. This is all being upgraded as well um, on ships that didn't have it or even ones that did into better filter filtration, won't go into the whole diagram here, but that's another important point. So now what we have is a plan in place to, this is before vaccine, a plan in place to make sure the air is clean, do social distancing by reduced capacity on vessels. Masking is now you know, a point, testing is now a point, and all the ships that have come back have implemented these protocols. And I'll get into that in a second because where we're going next is pretty exciting, at least you know, for the cruise industry to have, and I won't even say arguably, for sure I'm biased, right? But the cruise industry has always been that health and safety protocol. 
virus mitigator experts. Now it's, it's gonna be that on steroids because they know what to do, they know how to do it. This return to service plan has had them go into a lot further detail on the medical and the science behind it. And oh, by the way, now there's a vaccine. And you, I'm sure you've seen the news that um, a lot of the cruise lines as they return internationally, were not cleared yet here by the CDC, but internationally as they return, vaccines are being required so far. Um, but what people keep asking me and, and, and rightfully so is are, are vaccines going to be required for departures from the US? The answer is we don't know yet. Um, and that's simply because it isn't necessarily the ships that are requiring it, it's the ports of call they're going to, the countries they're visiting or a combination of both. So we'll see what happens when we get you know, more into the US return to service. So where are we going? Here's the fun part. Um, these are just representations of four of the cruise lines or ships that are coming out uh, by next year. Some are already out. The luxury sector of the travel industry and the cruise industry in particular, as we return smaller ships, higher end, controlled environment, charters are already returning with a vengeance for 22, 23, 24. And that's pretty exciting, but it's also because of the growth of this industry and why um, the luxury sector in particular has continued to grow, but that's not all because this is really fun. So what I want you to know is 16 ships were delivered in 2020 through a pandemic. They were already on order. They came through financially sound, all good. 16 ships last year, 31 more scheduled for delivery this year. And 107 are on the new, new ship order book in the next seven years. That takes us right back to where we were in 2017, 18, 19, when the cruise industry was growing exponentially, it's just continuing to happen. So this speaks to the viability um, of the cruise industry relative to the financials. You know, a lot of people have asked me and come in and said, my God, is the cruise industry going to go out of business? Are these cruise lines going to go bankrupt? The answer is no, um, not, not the major players and anybody that we would recommend to the incentive market. And then the last point there is that individual bookings are pacing ahead, ahead of 2019. And I think in this industry, we all get it, right? Everybody's got pent up demand. Everybody wants out. Everybody wants to travel. They just want to travel safely. So the perception of cruise took a major hit. But what I want you to be aware of is, you know, the stuff we heard on the news was the negative. Nobody talked about the positive. And that's a very important point here is that 350,000 people, and actually it's over 400,000 now, this is a CLIA stat, but this many people sailed since the shutdown with new protocols in place safely. So there was a couple things going on in Europe last year that were reported. There were some cases that happened. Things had to get figured out. Protocols had to be followed. That happened, no issues since. Or at least now if there is somebody that, that test positive for COVID on board, there is a, a, a protocol in place to isolate them, disembark them without disturbing the rest of the cruise so that everybody doesn't have to you know, end their vacation or their trip early. That's also why I think we're seeing so much interest in charter because it's your charter, it's your people, it's your bubble, it's your operation, it's your people. Um, and we kind of thought that might be the case as things came back. So. My goal here is to ensure you know some of the facts of what really happened last year, um, help the dialogue and help people feel comfortable because we know we have a fairly significant perception issue. How fast will that go away? I don't know. Um, I hope you've seen, what, what will contribute to that is I hope, I hope you've seen the news that Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, and a bunch of others are coming back to the Caribbean. They're not allowed to sail yet out of the US, but they are allowed to sail out of St. Martin, Barbados, um, and one other port I'm forgetting. They're also sailing in Europe. So they're going back in the water quickly. In June, Caribbean and Med so far. Um, Tahiti will start back up and here we go. Having said that, as I've said a, a couple of times, there's quite a few ships that have been sailing since last fall winter that nothing really was going on you know earlier in, in the time period in uh, that march april may time frame so that's the update and I, I want you to have good information to take forward as cruising comes up i've had plenty of people say oh my gosh i don't know if we can get anybody on a cruise but the education of this helps change the perception the understanding of what the cruise industry always did 
and then, oh my gosh, what they're going to do now going forward to help people feel comfortable cruising again. Um, they will be doing reduced capacity in the short term. They will be requiring mask. They will be uh, requiring testing. As we come back into the US, and, and I, you've probably seen the news over the last couple of days, there is tremendous pressure um, from the cruise industry and from the governor of Florida right now and Alaska and Alabama and Texas because of these ports of call with Mobile, Galveston, LA, et cetera. Um, there's a lot of pressure to get ships back here in the US. Um, you know, some would say, hey, let people make their own decision. If, if the cruise industry can establish that all these protocols and prove it's safe already with all the cruises that have taken place, well, then let people go. If they want people to be vaccinated, so be it. Again, we don't know here in the US yet, but with the vaccine rollout here, so good. Um, hopefully that, that's coming. But the testing, I don't think will go away for some time. As these ships come back in June, I know for a fact, even if you're vaccinated, they're going to be testing people because they want that double, triple layer of protection and, and ensure that they get consumer confidence back. So with that, the, the last thing I wanted to share with you is kind of really going back to these fun facts. The cruise industry is not going away. It is safe. Um, it will be, and, and this isn't a biased comment, it's a factual comment. It literally will be the safest way to travel because of all these protocols that are required of the cruise industry to return to service. I don't know how soon those may or may not relax. Maybe they'll do this forever. And I'll end it with, I kind of likened this whole thing a bit to 9-11 in that after 9-11, we all were like, what do you mean I've got to do three ounce bottles? And what do you mean I've, I've got to take my shoes off? And what the heck is the um, TSA and so forth? Well, whatever this new requirement will be to travel, it won't just be for cruise ships. We know that. I mean, there's countries that have required vaccination for years, not very many, right? But there are some. Will that be the new normal? We don't know. But the point is, after 9-11, we had a new normal. This will be a new normal again. Um, we'll see what it is. I don't know that the cruise industry is going to lead that as much as the destinations they visit probably will. Um, but things are definitely opening up. It's happening. It's happening rapidly. We're so excited. I mean, to the point Josh made a minute ago about going on a site inspection. I am going on my first cruise um, in the beginning or middle of June at the latest because I need to scream from the rooftops like I've been doing all winter um, about what they are and how safe it is. And I want people to see us on a ship and know what the process is. So I couldn't be more excited about it. It's been a long year for all of us. We all wanna be back out there. Um, it's just critically important that you know you've got experts to go to and please do that. If cruise comes up, know that you've got somebody to talk to. I can share actual factual information with you um, and let you know what those protocols are gonna be as soon as they're announced here in the US, but we've definitely got them now internationally in hand. So with that, I'll see if there's any questions. And I know it's a bit of a serious subject and I don't mean to take you there after the fun start to this call, but again, I just wanna stress how important it is that you all know what's really going on in the cruise industry, how fast it's coming back with all this new product and we couldn't be more excited to be back cruising again. So I don't know if we have any questions. Karen, I have a couple of questions. If, if I don't, if you don't mind, I, if I jump to this uh, head of the sure. line, I don't see anything in the chat box. But I've got a couple of things I would like you to expand on. Sure. Um, first of all, that was terrific information. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, you're a great sports a spokesperson for your, for the cruise industry, and uh, you you made it digestible and make it makes complete sense. Um, I think your point about the new normal is really well taken because we didn't the whole thing about taking off your shoes and no water bottles, who could have conceived of that, you know, in 20, whatever that year was that we had that terrible occurrence. So right. thank you for making that point. I have two things I'd like you to elaborate on. One of them is that very sexy expedition ship that we saw the pictures of. Could you tell us a little more about the ship, the line and where they're going? And I then sure I'll can. save my second question uh, until you finish with that one. Are you talking about the upper left or the middle here? I'm talking about the upper left. That yeah, so, thing. Yeah. Yeah, this is exciting. So Silver Sea Cruises, which most of you are probably familiar with, is a luxury cruise line. Um, they built and delivered the Silver Origin 50 cabins last year specifically for the Galapagos. So this ship is full time in the Galapagos year round. Um, and we're thrilled that so Silver Sea has had expedition vessels for the last couple of years in Antarctica and other locations to the point where they've 
this is actually one of the trending um, incentive choices or, or offerings, I should say, is expedition cruising. Um, the, and they're small ships, they're higher end, and they literally visit points of the world that most people would never go, which is the whole point of an incentive experience, right? Is to provide something they can't do on their own. So that's exactly what that ship is. And what other parts of the world other than the Galapagos is it going into? This ship in particular will be year round in the Galapagos, but because of the popularity of expedition cruising, Silver Sea actually converted two of their other ships, the Cloud and the Wind, to expedition vessels. Those will be doing different experiences around the globe, including Antarctica, Iceland, um, oh shoot, uh, off the coast of Australia, which I'm, it, it's escaping me at the moment, but expedition style, Arctic, excuse me, um, expedition cruises everywhere. This one is only Galapagos. It was really sexy. I really loved looking at the pictures. It's a pretty, pretty, I'm brand new. She delivered last year. Exactly. And the other one I would like you to talk about is all things river cruise. I yes. saw some beautiful pictures on the river cruises. Talk to us about what's going on in that industry. Yeah. So the river cruise industry prior to COVID um, was the fastest growing segment of the cruise market, frankly. Uh, and, and think about that for a second relative to how many ships I just showed you coming out. So river cruises are continuing to expand at all levels. Um, and that means we break cruises down associate them with hotels for, for those who don't know the cruise industry, which is fine. We just associate it to, are you looking for a Four Seasons? Are you looking for a, a JW? Are you looking for, you know, whatever, a big resort hotel? And then we associate it accordingly. Relative to river, the most popular first time river cruise experience is the Danube. And it's because you get, you get four countries in a five to seven night cruise. There is a ton of product and new product and it's continuing to grow. So the luxury side of river cruising um, well, it's not just the luxury, it's luxury and premium sides of river, river cruising are continuing to grow. And now we have river cruising um, on the Danube, which is Budapest, uh, sorry, Hungary, Austria, and Germany. And then we have the Rhine, which is Amsterdam to Basel, Switzerland. Then we have the south of France. We have Paris round trip. We have the Douro in Portugal. We have the... Um, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia on the other side, there's the, the Elbe, there's so many different river cruises. So the biggest challenge we have with river is the size of the vessels. They can only be so wide and so long to go under the bridges and through the locks, right? But that's where tandems come into play all the time. Um, kind of speaking to Scott's point a little while ago, we had a customer, the program operated in 2019, they needed to travel 1200 guests. So we came up with the idea of 35 nights of charter with two ships in tandem, four ships total, and they literally crisscrossed on the Danube, came all together in Vienna, and then went on their opposite ways. So that was cool. So there's all kinds of ways we can splice and dice it. Um, at the end of the day, the river cruise vessels are only so big. So that's just something to keep in mind. But if it's a creative you know, idea with how to make it available for larger groups, obviously the back-to-back -back scenarios or tandems work really, really well. Aaron. Uh, uh, we have a question in the chat box from Lenore. How do you realistically social distance on a cruise ship? So uh, depends on the brand, but bottom line is if they normally take 100 guests, they're probably only going to start sailing with 50 so that they have space. So they're not going to be returning to sail. I don't think any of them will return in the short term at 100% capacity. It'll be somewhere between 40 and 60%, depending on the cruise line. Now the luxury brands have more space to guest ratio, so they may be at the 60% versus the bigger ships that may be at 40 or 50. And then in the theater, again, you won't have full capacity on board, so the theater will be marked off seats so that you have so much space in between, in front and behind. Okay. And uh, Josh would like to know, it, is this data, could, could he have this to share with clients? 100%, yes. And the data all comes from the CDC and CLIA, for the most part, which are the two, you know, primary sources um, for the cruise industry and the CDC being the, the source for, by the way, the stats that I mentioned, the 0.0006%, not even percent, 0 0.006, 0, 0, speak Karen, 0, 0, 0, 006 um, is a CDC stat, which I found really interesting, right? Because it was reported so negatively, but that was actually a CDC stat. But yes, I can get those two, no problem. Or go for whoever you are today. <laughs> 
And Karen, tell us about these other three ships that we're seeing on this slide. Yeah, so underneath the Silver Origin is the new Emerald um, Azura. It's a 50 cabin yacht built ship. And if you look at some of the new builds, including the Ritz Carlton yacht, a lot of them are starting to look like this. The scenic eclipse, Crystal's coming out with one. This is the Azura. And what's cool about this is it's a sleek, beautiful looking yacht. 50 cabins, wow. premium price point, not luxury, premium price point. So we're very excited about this one because she'll be out this year. She was supposed to come out last year. And then next to the operator, which cruise line is the operator on that one? Scenic is, uh, Emerald is the sister to Scenic. So Scenic has river and ocean. Emerald had river as a baby sister, if you will, to Scenic. And this is the first ocean going vessel that Emerald has built under the Scenic family of brands. Wow, and what part of the world is it? That's Croatia. Um, she'll be home ported out of Croatia. And I'm not quite sure where she's going in the winter just yet. That's exciting. Beautiful. Yeah. And then the one on the upper right is the brand new Crystal Endeavor. Um, 200 cabins, brand new build, uh, expedition style ship coming out from Crystal. And then down there on the bottom right is a brand new build called the Atlas World Voyager. 100 cabins, also premium price point, brand new river cruise, or sorry, brand new cruise company, which we're pretty excited about because of her size. So as we come back into planning programs, I mentioned this a little while ago, but chartering is gonna be really of interest to people. It's already getting proven. We are, thank God, so busy again with new RFPs coming in, even for 22, a lot for 23 and beyond. But with this kind of thing that the people are comfortable presenting charter cruises because it's just their folks on board and they can manage the, the operation. Karen, Scott would like to know, should we expect clients to be able to find deals in this environment? Great question. Um, the most honest direct question is not necessarily. Um, and it's because of, at least not for 2022, we've got a serious inventory issue for 22, which I'm actually hearing is happening also on land. Um, but as people moved from 20 to 21 to 22, there's so much movement and now we've got this new influx of new bookings because people just want to get out and travel. 22 is, think about Alaska. My God, they lost 2020, they lost 2021. We're having a heck of a time finding space in 22 for even for programs that want to move. So that's driving the rate because the cruise industry is kind of like airlines, right? In that as inventory depletes, price increases. Having said that, if it's 23, 24, yeah, there's deals to be had because they want to get back out there. They want to fill that inventory. Thanks. You bet. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, Karen, I know the president of um, Carnival, um, she met with DeSantis and other people the other day. I saw that yep. on LinkedIn. Yep. Is, is anybody, um, is, is the CD, if anybody addressed it from, from a larger perspective, the CDC, any, any news from the last two or three days about what the CDC is gonna come back with? Not yet. So the CDC, and that's a, that's a great point I wanted to make. Thank you for bringing that up. So yeah, the, the, all the major brands met with, including, including Christine Duffy from Carnival, they all met with um, DeSantis and his team in, in Florida, in Orlando actually last Friday. Um, prior to that on Thursday, the CDC had said, not bowing to pressure, not gonna lift the conditional sale order till November of this year. Well, that set the roof on fire um, because the conditional sale order, um, one of the points of that was that vaccine, when the conditional sale order was put in place last October, at that time, the vaccine wasn't even out yet. So it's so old. And that's what the cruise industry is saying is, guys, redo it, redo it. We've been cruising. Let us cruise. Let us do the test cruises. Let us do this because we've now proven we can internationally. So it's a long answer, Josh, but the answer is no. We're all standing by because I'm sure you saw the article, but um, DeSantis and or the state of Florida has threatened legal action now against the CDC to allow them to cruise. Um, I'm sure that'll go over really, really well with the CDC, but something's gotta give. I mean, there's so much money, literally billions of dollars being lost in the United States because cruising cannot resume. So something's got to give. We'll see what it's going to be. 
my prediction is the the something's going to give because of money and all the money that's going offshore now with going out of Barbados or NASA. Um, I saw Limassol Cyprus is yep. you know, for med cruises. I mean, these people are going to be licking their chops to not let that revenue go away. So and that's I, exactly right because the cruise industry basically said, "Okay, see ya." I mean, I'm yeah. sorry to be so flip about it, but they're they're going to be out of the UK. They're going to be out of a lot of places in the Western Med and Eastern Med and the Caribbean. Yeah. So at some point, somebody's got, and that's kind of what Florida, somebody's got to start the process. So we'll see. I mean, we're all sitting here anxious to hear the result of last Friday's meeting um, and see what comes next. Well, um, yeah, DeSantis and Washington don't get along very well. So I, I exactly. So that's going to be interesting. See how that plays out. Right. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, we all scratch our heads because obviously there's a reason because cruises are international coming into the United States. That's why the CDC reporting is what it is. Um, but to say that it's an unsafe uh, mode of transportation or an unsafe travel option is ridiculous at this point. Considering you can go to a casino, you can go to a hotel, you can fly on an airplane, you can go to a baseball game, you can go to a concert, but you can't you're not allowed to go on a cruise. It's crazy. It's crazy. When, as, as I said, the cruise industry was never the cause nor the spread of this thing. It was in the news big time because of what happened in Asia, understandably so. But that's what gave it such a black eye. And that's what we're trying to fix. Big challenge. For sure. But really exciting news ahead. And I, I, that's, again, where I hope you guys all see that you know, the growth of the industry is not stopping. There's so much demand for cruise. Uh, people just want to be allowed to go. So. Well, you can sign me up for all those cute little 50 cabin yachts. If you need a, a, a team to go out and test those things out, I'm, I'm hankering to go. So Yeah, me too. I'll come back to you on that because we're all hankering to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Whit, do you have any other questions in the chat box? I think so. Um, it's, you know, Karen, if you want to, send your presentation out directly. You have everyone's email address. and I sure do. Thank you. I will do that. You're welcome to do that. Great. Appreciate the time, guys. Thank you. Really, really interesting. You know, we so often get a little silly on these calls and um, uh, spend a lot of time with pretty pictures and try to whet appetites around travel. But this was a very substantive conversation. Thank and you. you, you know, remind me of why I just love having you on my speed dial because you have <laughs> so much information to share and you're on top of all of the political side of this and the, the current situation as it evolves really every day. And I also want to thank Scott and Josh for adding so much substance to yeah, the Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you know, we have a small crowd today. I'm not quite sure why, but I do um, appreciate that this is a meaty conversation that will now go on our website. So awesome. that people can access it um, whenever they whenever they're interested in knowing more about the cruise industry. And we hope you'll Fantastic. be happy to share more of your expertise with us. Happy to anytime. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to turn the floor over to Kelly Mack. Thanks, Carol. Uh, Karen, thank you. What a great wealth of information and uh, such a fantastic update. I'm really excited to to share the video and promote it to so many of our clients who are looking for. Um, a lot of what you talked about, especially in the charter cruises. And so I'm excited to see those come back. I, I think that we all are scratching our heads going, why did somebody get to tell us that you can't cruise and you can do everything else in the world? So, um, <laughs> but always great, right? To learn about what the cruise industry is doing to lead technology, leaping forward in health and safety. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah, you thank you for that. Um, and, and today, I mean, like just by resounding a plum, Josh Brown. 100%. You are the winner 100%. of not only Maui gym sunglasses, but also a nice little gift basket put together by Karen and her team. I mean, Josh. Who are these people? <laughs> 50 weeks, and this has got to be top 10, top 10, Carol Whitney. Like, don't you? <laughs> I think so. I mean, just the artistic expertise alone to pull that mask out. And, and there's another version of the uh, Love Boat crew that you've been right. And he came with them. music. Somebody did some homework. <laughs> oh, well, I, I spent a lot of time watching the love boat instead of going to class in college. I, <laughs> Kelly on the side, it was, uh, 
Something you're very proud of, right, John? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be laying up in the fraternity house. My brother would come up and say, you plan on going to class? And he said, yeah, right after this third episode of The Love Boat. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, congratulations. Thank, thank, thank you. you. That was, thank you was... for bringing a little bit of amusement to the day. Um, next week, we, uh, had, we had publicized this as a, a, a presentation on a couple of Kind of hip hipster type places in Nova in uh, Arizona. Sorry, I'm stumbling. I had my champagne. Um, we were going to do this on a couple of properties in Arizona and have a Rat Pack vibe. So we want you all to bring your best Sinatra, Sammy Davis, Dean Martin thing next week. Um, that presenter unfortunately was unable to present, so we are going to Palm Springs instead. Um, so my old friend Angie Day, who many of you know from the her day her ten years at the Charleston CBB is gonna come on board with her team and we're gonna be talking about the Rat Pack vibe in Palm Springs, which if you know, I mean, if you're an old TV fan, then perhaps there are some TV series that took place in Palm Springs from that era. Am I right? I remember this from my youth anyway. Well, the invention of TV. <laughs> Somebody needs to find an old clip of Merv Griffin's show with the Rat Pack oh, on it. Yes. You can, you can rent um, Frank Sinatra's house there and do parties at, because Kat, Kat was doing one of those with one of her, with one of our groups last year and they 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 did the they did the frank sinatra house there yeah and liberace has a house there too if i'm not mistaken yeah. or maybe that's yeah. vegas that's that's vegas and marla monroe does she have a house i was oh, about nice. to say yeah. there's a huge tie there yeah well we got some swinging to do next <laughs> week uh there will be prizes there will be a, a package somewhere and we hope that everybody will come back bring your friends and enjoy a little Rat Pack vibe going on next week in Palm Springs. Karen, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Karen. Karen, thanks. Thanks, awesome. thanks, Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen.